Hallelujah. 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 I made a scene today at Brick House, Brooklyn Free Speech Network. Arno, a collector of African American world books, 718-647-5126. We're on camera now, and I'd like you to introduce yourself, please. Uh, my name is Arno, retired correction officer, retired juvenile justice worker. I build a library from the University of Rikers. They sent a box of books over to be boxes. We didn't know what was in the boxes, so we were getting ready to throw them in the mm -hmm. fire. And one of the boxes broke open, and a book fell on the floor, and it happened to be Man Child in the Promised Land. And one of my students said, can he have the book? And I said, yes, and the rest I took. And this is what you see of my library. Now, I'm just going to scan Panoram. We are in your basement, or a portion of your basement. And I'm doing this really, really quickly because I actually have a lot more to record. And I don't want to run out of camera and time because what you have that I've just glimpsed at is a real building worth the library ah and this is your frederick Douglass. and my artwork it's your artwork as well it looks like some kind of mixed medium am i correct in that right. okay oh no is that how do you spell that a-r-n-o and no oh no <laughs> the library is phenomenally extensive. Today is November twenty what seventh? See, look at this. Um, ah, another piece of his artwork. Arno, and this is she looks like an in the belly woman, but. On the, well, let me let me zoom in on your. It says, "Arno, African woman, not for sale." <laughs> okay, I like that, and I'm gonna keep scanning and 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 being because. So, most of these images on the shelves are your artwork. Yes. Wow. I've just zoomed in on the 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 oh, African Obama? sister. No, the uh, sister. Oh, African sister. Down here next to She she was in the Afri she's an African designer. Ah, she's an African designer. Okay. Now you had something in your hand. Ah. Beautiful. And see the lion over there? Lion and the tiger? Okay, lion and the tiger. Ah! And that's Frederick Douglass. That's Dr. Frederick. Children's well, books is at the bottom. The children's books are at the bottom. And this is adult. And these are books concerning young males and young females. That okay, over here, over here, is religious for men, men, men's issues. Religious for men's issues. Yes. So you can see that this life in the big city. And this life in the big city, you said, started as you opening boxes that was sent to Rikers to be throw away. Throw away. And because of your position as correction officer, you were also teaching. Right. And you used the books after the young man asked for them as a way of maintaining this. Right. And beginning the library? Beginning of my library. So how many books were in this one oh, box? Oh, boxes. A big oh. box like this. I don't know how many boxes. A, a, a big box. A big box. A big box full of books. 
and they sent them to Rikers to be destroyed. Right. And rather than destroying them, you decided to collect. It says, ah, I like this sign here. It says, wait, the camera's, uh, I cannot live without books. Right. Oh, that is beautiful. And you can see history around you. The beauty of this is you're still here to tell this story to some degree because it is your art as well as your collection of immense amount of knowledge and wealth. Arno, mm -hmm. do I have your permission to use this footage? If you want, it's up to you. You the one that's uh... No, no, no. I want your. I need your yes, yes, authorization. Yes, you have my I have your permission right. to use the footage to show to the world on brick television. Okay. Yes. See. When you go upstairs, I'll show you the house. Show you the one I just okay. kept doing. Okay. I'm going to scan one more time. And the library is extensive. I'm back and we're leaving the basement and we're heading toward another portion of the library that Arno has collected and amassed in... In how many years have you been at this collection? Oh, over over 20 years. Wonderful. Over 20 years of collecting art and books. Making art and and collecting a library of this books. This is um, Flake, Congressman Flake. Ah, Pastor okay. Allen AME. This is the Mayafa at, at St. Paul's. All right. These are Barack Obama's hands. Wow. Sign says, a proud past, a bright future. A proud past, a bright future. Did you write that? N no. Oh, okay. I, that, that was in the paper. I okay. just cut it out. And just put it up. Oh, okay. So, this the title on this book is Race and the Race to the White House. Right. I see it. Fat Fanny. The Mont Offer. You are more than your credit score. Right. We're going to keep going. And this portion of the library is what section? Males. Males. Male writers. Male, ah, male writers, okay. Uh, can you guesstimate how many books you have in your library? Oh, sure, I can give you the number. Oh, wonderful. I'll give you the number. Come on over here. All right. <laughs> and the, the question I asked was, can he guesstimate I said, can you guess to me how many books you have in your library? And he said, oh, I'll give you the number. And he actually has a log book. Oh, my heaven. Oh. 16,593. 16,593. <laughs> 16,000 books. And there's no room in the inn. <laughs> and, and there's no more room in the inn because the, the... I got stuff in the garage. Okay, there's books in the garage that are part of the 16,000. That you invited me. Listen, I'm here to educate, not incarcerate. Amen, amen, amen. See, that's my philosophy. Amen. Educate, not incarcerate. Um... How successful do you feel you were uh, at Rikers educating and not incarcerating? Plenty. Wonderful. Because I see some of my former students now and they say thank you. Amen. Thank you. I met a guy that lives in the projects. Okay. After doing, tw he did 25 years. Oh. Uh, he came up and he hugged me. He mm. said thanks for training me to be somebody. He said I come out with a degree. He can cut here. Okay. He's a barber. 
he has a skill that's marketable. That's it, it's, a that's way to support himself. When you don't know who you are, right? You do stupid things. Amen. Come on. Amen. I'm behind you. I'm gonna. And 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 this is your what section? African section. The African section at the bottom of the stairs. And and what is his name? That's Madea. Madea. Oh, her. I'm sorry, Madea. And she acts just like Madea is on TV. <laughs> Yes, I talked about you. And, you can't and go in there. No, 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 junkie. no, no. It's okay. I, I'm, I'm looking at this, this. It's books in there. It's books all around in there, but it's not no, cleaned up. No, it's all right. Sixteen thousand is a number that we can handle, and I'm gonna watch you ascend this staircase. Come on up. By Medea. Yep. Yeah. I'll see my and, story. And, and this section of your library is what called? All men writers. All men writers in this section. This section here. That's all women writers. All men writers in this section here. And on this side. All women writers. All women writers. And my code is blocking out some of this in my that's bags, right. but that's a, no look. Sixteen thousand and counting is the beauty of what you have. It's sixteen thousand and counting. This is Seventh Avenue because it's integrated. It's black and women, men and women. Oh, okay. Pull back so that this can be. Wow. Seventh Avenue. It's an integrated section of. Men and women, black and white writers. Wow. And this is children's. And the children's section on the left there, next to the an entire wall of mixed, multifaceted, multicultural writers. Shaft, the big score. Yeah. This is a, an honor and a pleasure. Okay, we're recording. Okay, I want people to see what the history is. It's in books, written by both black and white. And when you know who you are, you walk around proud. You don't let anybody know that you have underwear on. Straight talk for straight understanding. Absolutely. And that's what we have to start doing. Okay. I had one of my great mentors, Reverend Youngblood. Okay. Another mentor was Reverend Leacock. Another mentor, I had a lot of good mentors. And when I retired, I said I was going to do a little everything, construction work, I did a little bit of that. And then, I went to Catholic Charities. I met a kid on a boat. And they said, oh, we have a home in Staten Island that needs some men. Some men. So I went to Mount Loretta. And I started really finding out about Staten Island. They have this home for boys and girls who their parents don't want. And they would place them in foster care. Wow. But nobody ever told me that white folks were taking care of these kids better than their, their parents were. Mm. Every Saturday and every Friday, a group of white ladies used to come up and get the girls and take them shopping. The men used to take the boys to basketball games. Mm. Now these kids are in foster care. Mm. Across the street, on the other side of the street, was a, a nunnery for sisters, black sisters. Okay. I got to speak to them. I got to speak to the, the cardinal. 
upon the cook, he was really a gentleman. What year is, what year are we talking about? Oh, let me see. Uh, late, early 70s. No, no, no. Uh, 80s, around that time. Late mm -hmm. 80s. The early 80s, around that time. Yeah. Mm. But, uh, it was it was really interesting, and then I I started teaching at Bedford Library. Okay. And I had the uh, young people there. Uh, they were trying to get their their high school diploma, GED. Then Heinz had a program I got involved with that alternative to incarceration, where uh, boys and girls would come who are either go to Rikers Island or he think that they could make it without going to Rikers Island. And I would teach them. So working with young people, I work with my replacements, that's what I used to call it. Okay. I work with my replacement, <coughs> I saw that there was no male image. Mm -hmm. There was no man image. There's a male image, but not a man image. All right. In other words, when you came into the world, doctor, one male, one female. And when you die, they put them there, one male, one female. And that's what the problem is today. Okay. We need some men to step up to the plate. And once we get that, hey, we'll be all right. And this is the history of it. And I'm still searching for books. Wonderful. Yeah. Do you have a criteria for how you pick your books? I used to until I met this young lady, well, I met her mother, a uh, boss at a book fair. Go ahead. And they're out of New Mexico. I said, I need black books, history of black people. I want hymns, I want history, I want veterans, uh, soldiers, I want nurses, I want books, everything concerning blacks. Everything, good and bad. <laughs> okay. Because I don't, I don't want nobody to say, well, you don't have no library, no library has bad books. Yes, I got bad books. I got books that I don't see why they had them printed, but. <laughs> uh, but by black folk or by? Both, by oh. both black and white. Okay. Concerning black history. Ah, okay, good. No good. Even the Bible oh, doesn't yes. talk about a black woman. And it was the first woman, Sarah, sent her to her maid. And she was a black woman. Egyptian, that's right. And she gave, whose mother? Ishmael. All right. Thank you. <laughs> no, I, I'm, I, I, <laughs> See? But they don't talk about her. <laughs> All right. And the Arabs don't want to claim me either. Okay. All right. Mohammed, Mohammed, Mohammed. What about Hagar? Right. What about Hagar? No, 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 don't bring her up. Right. She's great grandma. All right. <laughs> Ishmael. Mm. See? They don't realize once you got one third of, of your blood, you what what color is you? <laughs> I'm gonna use big word, is you. We is. Okay. And those of us who have acknowledged that we have to be proud we is, have learned who we are. And it's not easy when we grew up in cultures where in the house you grow up in, you are usually confined to either you go along with this program or you out the door. You know, so act like you believe the BS or we're going to kick you out, disown you. There will be no inheritance. Right. So, like, but, 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 but it's not true. How dare you? It was good for my great grandfather. It was good for my grandma. It's right. great. It's good for me. I said, but it's lies. Right. Not nah, wrong answer. Okay, I'll give you another uh, people to think about. Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace. Written by a white man. <laughs> written by a white man. But a white man couldn't sing it. And when Kennedy died, he bonded Jesse Norman. I remember Jesse. To sing Amazing Grace. Wow. 
And she did. No? She did. I thought so. Well. Barack Obama sang it. At the nine, when the people at the church were killed at the church, not too long ago. Mm. Amazing Grace. And what's the song they sing at all funerals throughout the country? <laughs> Amazing Grace, how sweet, sweet the sound. sound. <laughs> that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm fine. Thank God I'm free at last. I've been blessed because learning about everybody's dying and then the king of the Jews thing and <laughs> the fact that they lied and made up sins that blamed them on God mm -hmm. and had to take them back saved me. Yeah, so th these are things that we have to start looking at and saying to ourselves, I am somebody. Because you're in history. <clears throat> and once you're down on a piece of paper, you, you should be proud of who you are. Trust me, when I began publishing back in the 80s, I had been writing for almost 20 years. Mm. I had a few things printed because I was in high school, college, but I quit City College in the late 60s as my admittance to myself that I wasn't going to go get a degree to encourage and support white supremacy. Partly because when I was 17, I had a white man tell me I was overqualified for a job because I had a high school diploma. I had extracurricular activities and had a work history. And he says, son, we can't hire you. You're overqualified. I go home and ask my mother, I said, Ma, how does a young black man with a high school diploma be overqualified for anything? She said, you were talking to probably somebody like myself who didn't finish the 10th grade and was worried that you were going to take their job. What's that big word? Take their job. Well, I, I, I heard her say it. And then I started realizing I'm getting ready to go to college to get more education. That means you'll be dangerous. Not, wait, it meant I was going to, if I'm overqualified now. Imagine, at, wait, that's what I said. That's what I'm saying. That is something that we do not realize that we are. Well, I knew when I was. Yeah, no, but see, it, <clears throat> you knew it, but you didn't. You wasn't walking it. And when the white man saw you, he said he ain't walking like he's qualified. Cause look at Frederick Douglass. What did Frederick Douglass do? He never went to school. He would tell them, "You go read first. And after they read, he'd go read the same story. He would memorize the whole verse. Ah, uh, memorization. What's that big word? Memorization. Okay. Well, for me, I, I was my mother's third child, but I was the sickly lying around the house one. When I got my introduction to real reading, my mother bought an encyclopedia set on layaway credit uh -huh. in 1956. I know about those books. All 22 volumes I include. Got them, I got them downstairs. And and the two dictionaries. With right. Them, I got them in and, the garage. And the atlas. I got all that in the garage. My I, kids had all that. Uh, I, I, I want this uh, library because I go to the library, the public library now and then. Mm -hmm. I got and these, I say two shelves, these two shelves, more than they got in the library. About our history. Yeah, about our history. Ah, yeah. So, Fully and understand. Then, then I'm trying to get young males to start reading, not only the Bible. I want them to start, I'm talking about age, no matter what age, I want them to uh, read. I said, get yourself an African Bible. You have an African Bible? African-American Bible? Okay. And once you get one of those and you start reading it, you see, you find out who you are. And once you find out that you're in the Bible, 
All these years I've been in here. Yes. If it wasn't for Hagar, there would be no Israel. You can't tell people that. Because they've been soaked in the juice. Oh, that white man did everything. Well, this is what this is. This is what this is. I'm here to educate and incarcerate. I hope by then I have the rest of the library app, uh, uh, money to fit, put some shelves in. I started this on my own. The Arno Library, an original poem. Arno's library is a treasure he compiled saving throwaways. The artist Arno is a brilliant mind and a thinking warrior. Art and library will tell and teach forever in a unique way. Arno's ancestors are dancing in their spirits at their gifted son. We must thank Arno for blessing our future praising our past. Arno, a collector of African American world books, 718-647-5126. Copyright 2019, M.A. Butcher, All Rights Reserved. Author of Positive Messages for Young Men Growing Up Without Their Fathers, Visit the website poemspromotingpeace.com We would like to thank our sponsors, Poems Promoting Peace, a division of Yamu Publishers. Special thanks to Brick, Brooklyn Free Speech Network.